Kia ora koutou, uh, ko Ngāpui, Tokuiwi, uh, kei te mana, matapono, matatapu, ahau i mahi ana, ko Sophie Toko Ingoa. Hi everyone, I work for the Office of the Privacy Commissioner and my name is Sophie. I'm so excited to speak to you all today and to tell you about the exciting world of privacy and by the end of this talk I hope to have recruited you all as subversive privacy developers. Your role as developers is critically important to ensuring that the Privacy Act works for individuals and that individuals' privacy is protected. You have the ability to influence and develop products and services that help people have control over their information. In New Zealand, our Privacy Act has 12 privacy principles which govern how agencies should use, collect and store information. So what is privacy? What are these magical principles and how can you use them? So privacy is about preserving people's control over their information in the face of technology that lessens that control. Their information is anything about them. Personal information doesn't have to have someone's name attached to it. It could be anything that might identify a person. So you know that picture of your lower back tattoo, of the dolphin jumping over the rainbow next to the Chinese symbol that's for soup? That could identify you. So principle one, why do you need the information? Whenever an agency, like a client, wants to collect information, they need a lawful purpose, and it needs to be necessary for that purpose. Like if a client said, I want to develop an app to help people to get from A to B quicker. It seems logical that they might need location information in order to determine the fastest route between a person's house and, say, their pharmacy. But do they also need to know what the person bought when they got to the pharmacy? Probably not. You can help your clients ensure that their purpose is clear from the outset because purpose flows through the rest of the principles. Principle two, get it directly from the person if you can. Agencies are required to get information from the person directly, if at all possible. There are a few exceptions, like if people might die or the person tells you it's all right, but mainly you should encourage your clients to collect information directly from the individuals. Principle three. Tell the person you are collecting information and why. Any agency that collects personal information has to tell the person that they are doing so. They have to tell them what information they're collecting and why they're collecting it. This means connecting the type of information you're collecting, like location information, with your purpose, like getting people from A to B faster. Principle four, don't collect the information illegally or unfairly. In essence, this is the don't be creepy or illegal principle. A good rule of thumb is, if it feels creepy, it probably is. <laughs> principle five. This is probably the principle you're most familiar with. Principle five says you need to keep any information you collect safe. You may know that there's a privacy bill before the house at the moment which contains a requirement that any agency who experiences a data breach they, they will have to report it to the Office of the Privacy Commissioner and potentially the individuals involved. So even though you may have done everything you can to keep information secure, a breach might occur. But if you followed the previous principles and ensured that your client is only collecting the information they need, they're not being creepy about it, and they're just getting what they need exactly, any breach will be somewhat contained because you can't breach information you don't collect. Principle six. Principles six, 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 seven, and eight are kind of related. So six is let people access their information. Seven's let people correct it if it's wrong. And eight is make sure it's accurate before you use it. You as a developer have an opportunity to build in user access to information. So users can access and correct their own information in real time. This means individuals have control over their information, but it also saves your client time and money in having to respond to these types of requests. Principle nine. Don't keep it longer than you need it. Like principle five, principle nine helps safeguard against the fallout of the somewhat inevitable data breach. If your client hasn't been keeping information longer than they need to, if there's a breach, then there's less information that can be lost in that breach. Principle 10, only use it for the purpose you collected it. 
and Principle 11, don't disclose it unless you have a good reason. So agencies shouldn't use information for a purpose they didn't collect it for, and they shouldn't disclose it to anyone unless there's a good reason, like a person told them it was okay, or someone's safety's at risk, or other good reasons found in the Privacy Act. By helping your clients clarify their purpose, only collect the information they need, collect it in a non-creepy way, keep it secure, getting rid of it when it's no longer needed, you can help ensure that agencies only use information for the purpose that it was they originally got it. Because if there's not a bucket of delicious data sitting idly by, your clients won't be able to use it. Principle 12, our last principle, don't assign unique identifiers unless necessary. So don't assign like a number or a code to an individual unless it's absolutely necessary and don't use other people's unique identifiers like IRD numbers to identify people in the system. So in essence, these principles are designed to make sure information is collected in a transparent and responsible manner and in a way that doesn't tweak pe people's creepy trousers. You know, like when you break up with someone and then Spotify starts suggesting breakup playlists? No, just me? Okay, cool. <laughs> I would imagine that a large part of any developer's role is ensuring the security of the product or service. And you will have noted from principle five that security is part of privacy too. And in my view, security and privacy matter equally and overlap a lot. For me, privacy is the human face of security. People don't often need to or want to know exactly how their information is being kept secure, but they do want to know that this being, is being done. They also want to know what agencies are collecting and why and who has that information being shared with. You can help design products and services that give people this information. You have the power to make changes that are privacy enhancing and that your client may not have even thought of but will save them time and resources and give individuals better oversight over their information. One way agencies give individuals oversight is through a privacy policy. I'm sure you all got the flood of GDPR emails where it told you that every man and his dog was updating their, pri uh, updating their privacy statement. But did you read them? I didn't, and I don't blame you. They're often full of legalese and jargon and no one in their right mind is going to spend time reading them. In fact, in 2012, someone worked out that it would take 76 days in a year to read all of the privacy policies for all of the services you interact with. And ain't nobody got time for that. But you can help agencies communicate the why and what of information they collect and make this as simple as possible for people. You could help them by designing in features that explain what information is being collected and why rather than relying on people to read a lengthy privacy statement. It could be as simple as a short line next to each data point, like next to email it says, because we'd like to send you love letters about our product. Or next to phone number it says, because texting is lame and we want to call to hear your sexy voice. Well, maybe not exactly that, but you get the idea. Which leads me to turning you all into subversive privacy developers. So I realise it's unlikely that your client is going to come to you and ask you to build the most privacy-friendly product you've ever seen, but that doesn't mean you can't do it anyway. Privacy is likely to be well down the list of your client's priorities, but like security and user experience, you know best. So you can use your developer powers for good and help your clients build privacy-friendly products. You could do this through raising privacy gaps with your clients, just as you would with any security flaws. You could also ensure that data fields are not proxies for other information. Say, if your client needs to know how old someone is, do they uh, need their date of birth or do they just need their age? You could ensure that any fields collecting personal information have limited free text so that they're not collecting unnecessary information. You could encode privacy into your design through having privacy by default rather than users having to navigate themselves toward privacy, like an app that means that your information is only seen by you unless you enable it to be seen by others. In essence, what I'm telling you to do is to engineer or to encourage good privacy behaviours, like making the privacy settings button bigger and shinier than the give all my information away for free button. And at the end of the day, what's the harm in you building in privacy where you can? 
you may be saving your clients embarrassment later on. We wouldn't want to have to ping agencies for problems that smart developers could have fixed. So that's it, folks. I hope I've convinced you all to become subversive privacy developers and help us give the power back to the people. And maybe if you do a really good job, you might even get a privacy trust mark. Thanks.